Welcome, this is Kathleen Pearl, out of the iron furnace. Father, in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, the door by which men might enter into the Father, our Creator's realm. Lord, we come to you in his name and ask that your Ruach HaKodesh, your precious Holy Spirit, come, and Lord, anoint the tongue and the heart of your instructor teach and let it be the pen her tongue of a ready writer to inscribe on the hearts of men women and children the instructions of the lord father i pray that you would anoint the ears of the hearer and the eyes to perceive and understand what matters in this hour and what is transpiring that all the glory and honor and power and strength and majesty might be to you and to you alone out of the Iron Furnace. Today is August 2nd, 2015. And through Iran, Iraq, and Israel, there is a heat wave that's absolutely breaking out. There are fires happening on the border of Israel. And it's, a, it's according to AccuWeather, the heat index in Bandahar, Iran, feels like 163 degrees. Can you even imagine? I had a vision about a week ago. I called it, I have a, uh, under prophecies and visions about breath of fire. I saw the Lord breathing and fire coming when it hit the earth in the Middle East, over the Middle East. Here it is. In addition, there are fires breaking out all through Oregon, Washington, and California on the West Coast. And uh, tremendous fires are raging. And all of these things are a judgment out of the iron furnace. Now let's look at the scripture Parsha readings for this week, which is very interesting. It's I pleaded. And we are having a review in Deuteronomy of uh, God's commandments and his, his, uh, his methods of operating. And we'll start out with, uh, it's I pleaded, it's Va'atachanan. It's Deuteronomy 32, 3, excuse me, 23 through 7, 11. And I'm going to start out with the first part about Moses uh, the children of Israel are coming out of the, their wilderness um, exile, so to speak, of 40 years and uh, are about to enter into the promised land, their inheritance, to enter into the inheritance. And then I pleaded with Adonai, Adonai, Elohim, you have begun to reveal your greatness to your servant and your strong hand. For what other God is there in heaven? Or on earth that can do the works and mighty deeds that you do? Please, let me go across and see the good land on the other side of the Yardin, that wonderful hill country and the Lebanon. But Adonai was angry with me on account of you, and he didn't listen to me. Adonai said to me, enough from you. Don't say another word to me about this matter. Climb up to the top of Pisgah. And look out to the west, north, south, and east. Look with your eyes, but you will not go across the Yardin. However, commission Yahashua, encourage him and strengthen him, for he will lead this people across and enable them to inherit the land that you will see. And so we sta stayed in the valley across from Biet Peor. And Moses was not allowed to enter in with the next generation because, why? I don't know, I was angry with him on account of the people and the incident at the rock, where instead of speaking to the rock to bring forth water, he struck the rock and misrepresented God. And in addition, Yahashua, which is the name, the Hebrew name of Yeshua, Yahashua, Jesus, is salvation. That it, Moses didn't enter in. He was engaged 
on Sinai with the laws and the rulings and the covenant, the Ketubah, the marriage covenant was established there. But the promise of being married to Jesus was when his blood delivered us and brought our salvation from our sins. And then the promises of God, Yahashua, we began to enter into the promises. This is the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. Moses being the law of the Torah, which pointed to the wedding covenant and us enabling them to keep them by entering into his promises through the blood covenant of the perfect, pure, holy blood of the sinless Son of God, Yeshua HaMashiach. Now I want to look at this, uh, the, the laws, Deuteronomy 4. Now Israel, listen to the laws and rulings I'm teaching you in order to follow them. Okay, we need to understand what God wants us to follow so that you will live. Then you will go in and take possession of the land. Then Adonai, the God of your fathers, is giving you in order to obey the mitzvahs, the commandments of Adonai, your God, which I am giving you. Do not add to what I am saying and do not subtract from it. Don't give me your interpretations. Why? Because this is a big issue from the garden. The serpent said to eat, hath God said that you will you will die. He didn't say that. He said, you will know good from evil. Take and eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't you add or take away from what I'm saying to you, says God. And Jesus, we entered into that. These are the laws. These are the rulings. You need to keep to this. Don't give me your halakha, halak law. Don't give me your interpretation and your rabbinic authority. Sorry, I'm going to step on a lot of toes here. But let's just look at what it says and stick to that. If God said it, you do it. And why? How, how did God enable us to do this? Okay, we know that this is righteousness and this is wickedness. How do we know this? Well, when we hear the word, of the word, the Torah is good. The law is good because it shows us. It's a taskmaster. It's a, it's, a, it's a tutor to bring us to understanding and our intellect, you know, right from wrong. Those of us that have a conscience, we're built in with that. Okay? We know that that's a bad thing. Don't do that. But when we're in a culture or society that's being given over to hardness and a searing of the conscience, then we need to be instructed in righteousness. And don't add to it. Why? Luke 4, uh, 1 says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. This is Jesus' testings after he was anointed for ministry. Being 40 days, tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said to him, If thou be the Son of God. In other words, you know, he's, Pulling him in. If thou be the son of God, command this stone that in me made bread. And Yeshua answered him saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Not the word of man, not men's teachings and that make null and void the word of God or men's ideas of what the word of God says. God speaks straight up. I'm going to give you these, okay, laws and rulings, and you obey them, and don't add or take away from it. Don't do that. That's a dangerous thing to do, and you don't want to uh, provoke the Lord. As Moses did, that's why he was supposed to speak to the rock, not strike it. He misrepresented God, and he was more accountable. Look, the Hebrews made him mad. Okay, but you do not take out your anger against God. God is perfect and righteous. And, okay. Let's go down a little bit further. Your eyes have seen what the Lord God did because of Baal Pure. For the men of Baal Pure 
And all the men that followed Baal Pierre, what they went to worship, okay, Baal. I said, uh uh. You know, they got judged and they were destroyed. All right? And the Lord your God has destroyed them from among you. But you that cleave to the Lord your God is alive, every one of you this day. Behold, I've taught you. What does that say to us today? You cleave to God. You, no matter what, you cleave to God. And God's enemies are going to be destroyed. Those who are treacherous and unfaithful. Behold, I've taught you statutes and judgment, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should do so in the land where you go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great? Who God has God so close to them as the Lord our God is in, in all things that we can call upon him for. And one nation was there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I said before you today. This is Moses rhetorically asking the children of Israel. Only take heed to yourself and keep your soul diligent. Let Okay, keep heed. Be diligent about this lest you forget the things which your eyes have seen and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Remember what God did for you. Remind yourself. Keep it there. Keep it in front of you. Keep it on your forehead. Keep it in your hand. But teach and teach them to your son and your son's sons. Especially the day that you stood before the Lord your God in Horeb when the Lord said to me, gather me the people together. And I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth. We need to fear God. And we need to teach that we may teach our children. Our children don't belong to the state. They were God given to us and we are their stewards over their lives and souls. And even their internal destinies. And we are to teach and instruct them. Not a pornographic, socialistic, educational system. And you came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire in the midst of heaven with darkness and clouds and thick darkness. And the Lord spoke to you out of the midst of the fire. And he heard the voice of the words. But you saw no similitude, only you heard a voice. And he declared to you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone and we're going to do a review of those commandments because they've been removed from before your eyes and from all these places in public and even amongst the servants of God very few will come and we need to understand what the commandments of God are or we don't know that we've sinned because we live in a a Definitely compromised conscience of culture. Let's go to Deuteronomy 5. Then Moshe called to all of Israel and said to him, Listen, Israel, to the laws and rulings which I am announcing in your hearing today, so that you will learn them and take care to obey them. Adonai, our God, made a covenant with us at Horeb. Adonai did not make this covenant with our fathers, but with us. With us who are all of us here alive today. Adonai spoke with you face to face from the fire on the mountain. At the time I stood between Adonai and you in order to tell you what Adonai was saying, because on account of the fire, you were afraid and wouldn't go up onto the mountain. He said, I am Adonai, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, where you lived as slaves. You are to have no other gods before me. You are not to make for yourselves a carved image or any kind of representation of anything in heaven above, on the earth beneath, or in the water below the shoreline. You are not to bow down to them or to serve them, for I, Adonai, your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the parents, also the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but displaying grace to the thousands 
generation of those who love me and obey my commandments. Mitzvah. You are not to misuse the name of Adonai your God because Adonai will not leave unpunished someone who misuses his name. We say in the King James English, don't take the Lord's name in vain. Observe the day of Shabbat. Set it apart as holy. As Adonai your God ordered you to do. Now the Catholics have taken this commandment out of the Ten Commandments for any Catholics who are listening. You have six days to labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Shabbat for Adonai your God. On it you are not to do any kind of work, not you, your son, or your daughter, not your male or female slave, not your ox, your donkey, or any of your other livestock, and not the foreigner staying with you inside the gates to your property, so that your male and female servants can rest just as you do. You are to remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and Adonai your God brought you out from there with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, Adonai your God has ordered you to keep the day of Shabbat. Honor your father and mother as Adonai your God has ordered you to do so that you will live long and have things go well with you in the land Adonai your God has given you. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false evidence against your neighbor. Do not covet. Your neighbor's wife, do not cover your neighbor's house, his field, his male or female slave, his ox, his donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Bless the Lord for his perfect laws. All right, let's go back to the scripture in Deuteronomy 4, 20. But the Lord has taken you and brought you out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be to him a people of inheritance as you are this day. So we are the Lord's inheritance. And let's look at a couple of scriptures about this out of the iron furnace of Egypt, the house of bondage and slavery to bring a nation, a kingdom of people and inheritance for the Lord. Genesis fifteen seventeen, and it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. In that same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, Unto your seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river Euphrates, the Canaanites, the Ke uh, Kenizzites and the Kedomianites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Rephaim and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Girgashites and the Jebusites. Now I want to back up in Genesis 15 and just look at a little bit more of the context of this. Um, these are the uh, words that came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceedingly great reward. And Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward in my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold to me, thou hast given you no seed, and lo, one born of my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and saying, This shall not be your heir. In other words, Eleazar, this, his house steward. But he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be your heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Now look towards the heaven and tell the stars if you be able to number them. And he said, So shall thy seed be. And he believed the Lord and he counted to him righteousness. And he said to him, I am the Lord that brought you out of the Ur of the Chaldees. That would be Iraq. To give you this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said to him, Take a heifer of three years old and a she goat of three years old and a ram of three years old and a turtle dove and a young pigeon and he took to him all these and divided them he cut them in half and laid each pace one against another but the birds divided he not and when the fowls came down upon the carcasses abraham drove them away so he offered up uh, an animal sacrifice and then the sun was going down and a deep sleep fell upon abraham and lo the horror of great darkness and fell upon him. And he said to Abraham, this is the Lord, Abram, actually it wasn't Abraham yet, Abram, know of a surety that your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them. 
and they shall afflict them for four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterwards they shall come out with great substance. And you shall go to your fathers in peace and shall be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. All right, so there's a maturing of iniquity implied here. And this land that he talked about was Egypt. Uh, and verse 17, it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between the pieces, the animal pieces. And in the same day, the Lord made the covenant with Abraham, saying, unto your seed have I given this land. To the river Euphrates, it, it, to, uh, excuse me, from the river of Egypt and to the great river Euphrates and the Canaanites, Kenizzites and the Ketamites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Rephaims and the Amorites, even the Canaanites and the Gergesites and the Jebusites. And here God brought them out of the, this smoking furnace. All right. And Genesis 19 27 and Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord and he looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah and towards all the land of the plain and behold and lo the smoke of the country went up as a smoke of a furnace and it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt that would be uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, let's look at another scripture from 1 Kings 5.49, where Solomon is praying and dedicating the temple, Solomon's temple. Then hear thou thou prayer and their supplication to heaven, your dwelling place, and maintain their cause, that is, God's people. And forgive your people if they've sinned against you and all their transgressions, where they transgressed against you, and give them compassion before them who carried them captive, that they may have compassion on them for your people and your inheritance, which brought you brought forth out of Egypt from the midst of the furnace of iron, that your eyes may be open to the supplications of your servant and the supplications of your people Israel to hearken to them all the days that they called you. For you did separate them from among all the people of the earth to be your inheritance as you spoke by the hand of Moses, your servant, when you brought our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord our God. So here we get a reiteration. They're set apart. They went through the furnace. God brought them out. And so what happened? What has happened? Isaiah 31, 6. Let's look at this scripture. Turn you unto him from whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted. For in that day every man shall cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which your own hand have made unto you for a sin. All right, they've turned away from God. Okay, then shall the Assyrian fall with the sword, not of a mighty man, and the sword, not of a mean man, shall devour him, but he shall flee from the sword, and his young men shall be discomforted, and he shall pass over to his stronghold for fear, and his princes shall be afraid of the ensign, says the Lord, whose fire is in Zion, and his furnace is in Jerusalem. All right, this is about war and destruction and the conflict because of idolatry in the land that the children of Israel committed, and the Assyrian who will come against them and then fall okay by this this a a, uh, a devouring sword and then the stronghold of fear what is the stronghold of fear this is what's coming the stronghold of fear now and it was at this time uh because of the ensign because of the raising up of the standard of god covenant for breaking covenant his fire is in zion and his furnace is in jerusalem don't think that this is not going to come again. Oh, it's on the way. Listen, even again, when I talked about all the fires, there were warnings, the heat waves through the Middle East. Now, Iran is about to purchase from China the Chengdu J-10 multi-role jet fighter known in the West as the Vigorous Dragon, according to an exclusive report from Debka Files. Beijing... 
uh, has agreed to sell Tehran 150 of these sophisticated jets, which are comparable to the U.S. F-16s. From Moscow, Tehran has ordered 250, so this makes 400, the highly advanced Sukhoi Su-30 MK-1 fighters as well as 100 in-flight refueling planes. The scale of Iran's multi-billion acquisitions from China and Russia indicates that Tehran's top spending priority for funds released by the lifting of sanctions will be the construction of a spanking new air force. All right, so so what does this mean? This is, this is since the Iran nuclear deal was signed and the sanctions uh, uh, regarding the restraint on finances was lifted and, uh, and Iran is arming to the teeth. Iran is arming to the teeth. And who's her enemy? Why, the great Satan and the little Satan, Israel and the United States. Most certainly, there is nothing new under the sun. History is cyclical, and here we go, Isaiah 48. You hear this, O house of Jacob, which are called by the name of Israel. And, and I'll, I'll put Israel and the United States, both of the, these countries, these nations that once had covenant with God and are come forth out of the waters of Judah, which swear by the name of the Lord and made mention of the God of Israel, but not in truth, not in righteousness, for they call themselves of the holy city and say themselves upon the God of Israel, the Lord of hosts is his names. And we'll throw in the Catholic Church there also, call themselves Christians. They're no more Christian than the tree outside. I have declared the former things from the beginning, and they went forth out of my mouth. See, God knew ahead of time, and he declared it. And I showed them, and I did them suddenly. And they came to pass. They came to pass. When they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come. Because I knew that you are obstinate, and your, your neck is an iron snoo, and your brow brass. I even have from the beginning declared it to you. Before it came to pass, I showed it to you, lest you should say, My idol has done it, and my graven image, and my molten image has commanded them. You have seen, and you have heard, and see all of this, and will not you declare it? I have showed you new things from this time, even hidden things, and you didn't know them. They are created now, not from the beginning, even before the day when you heard, us, heard them, lest you should say, Behold, I knew them. Yes, you heard not. You knew not. Yet from that time your ear was not open, for I knew you would deal very treacherously, and you were called a transgressor from the room. For my name's sake I will defer mine anger, and for my praise I will refrain from you that I cut you not off. Behold, I refined you, but not with silver. I have chosen you in the furnace of affliction. For my own sake, even for my own sake, will I do it. How should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory to another. Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, and call me my call. Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my call. Hearken and listen up, O Jacob and Israel. Listen up, United States and Israel, my call. I'm him, the first, I'm also the last. Mine hand has also laid the foundations of the earth, and my right hand span the heavens. When I call to them, they stand up together. Listen up. Jeremiah 11, 1. The word that came from Jeremiah saying, Hear you the word of this covenant. Speak to the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Say to them, Thus is the God of Israel. Cursed be the man that obeys not the words of this covenant. What covenant? The one I read to you, the Ten Commandments, which I commanded your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt from the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice and do them according to all which I command you. So shall you be my people and I will be your God that I may perform the oath which I have sworn to your fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey as it is this day. Then I answered and I said, So be it, Lord. And the Lord said unto me, Proclaim all these words in the city of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, saying, How Hear ye the words of the covenant and do them. For I earnestly protested to you this day, I earnestly protested unto you, your fathers, in the day that I covenanted and brought them up out of the land of Egypt, even unto this day, rising early and protesting, saying, Obey my voice. Yet they obeyed not, nor inclined their ear, but walked every one in the imagination of their evil heart. Therefore, I will bring upon them all the words of this covenant, which I commanded them to do, but they did them not. And what's he going to do? 
Ezekiel 22, 17, and the word of the Lord came saying, Son of man, the house of Israel has become to me dross. All they are brass and tin and iron and lead in the midst of the furnace. They are even the dross of silver. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you've all become dross, behold, I will gather you in the midst of Jerusalem as they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow the fire upon it, to melt it. So I will gather you in mine anger and in my fury, I will leave you there and melt you. Yes, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath and you shall be melted in the midst thereof as silver is melted in the midst of the furnace. So you shall be melted in the midst thereof and you shall know that I, the Lord, have poured out my fury upon you. Now, I want to suggest to you that this is, we are at this scripture in the timetable of events in Zechariah 13. In that day there shall be open a fountain to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. What fountain is that? Who's the house of David? Yeshua, Yahshua. It's, it's, the fountain is the fountain of blood that cleanses from sin and from uncleanness. The Torah, the law of Moses does not cleanse. It does not cleanse sin. The bulls, uh, the blood of bulls and goats and all that, they do not cleanse sin and uncleanliness. They do not make you holy. Only the blood of Jesus. That is the fountain. The, the law, you cannot become clean and, and, and purged from sin by keeping the law of Moses, the Ten Commandments. You can understand that you're not right and you're unholy, but you cannot be saved from your sins. Only the blood of Jesus. And so come to that pass in that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land. Tell me about the names of the idols, about Buddhism and Roman Catholicism and New Age and Hinduism and Islam. Hmm? and all the other pagan idols, and they shall be no more be remembered. And also I will cause the prophets in the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. Talk to me about rabbinical Judaism and Talmud and Halakhalah, where they change the very words of the Torah. And don't talk to me about, let me talk to you about the prophets in the, that have the unclean spirit in, in the Zohar and in the Kabbalah teachings. Because you see, these these orthodox people, they have a need for the true spiritual reality. The law doesn't give it to you. So they go and get it from other sources instead of coming to the living fountain of Jesus' blood and the power of the Holy Spirit. And it shall come to pass that when it, any shall yet prophesy, then his father and mother that began him shall say to him, You shall not live, for you speak lies in the name of the Lord. And his father and mother that began him shall thrust him through when he prophesies. Sounds like the spirit of, uh, in that day of um, Korah, and his father, they ran after Baal Peor, and his father and his mother that shall begat him shall thrust him through when he prophesies, and shall come to pass in that day that the prophets shall be ashamed every one of his vision. Has this come to pass? No. Is it going to? Yes, very soon. It's on the way. But he shall say, I'm no prophet. I'm a husbandman, for man taught me to keep cattle from my youth. And when she'll say to him, what are these wounds in your hands? And he shall ask those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. But my goes sword against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow with whom the Lord of hosts shall smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered and I will turn my hand upon the little ones. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, says the Lord, now we're talking Israel, two parts shall be cut off and die. But the third shall be left therein, and I will bring the third part through the fire, and we will refine them as silver is refined, because even those who want God and are trying to follow and be obedient to their understanding of God need to be refined and purged. I will refine them as silver is refined in a crucible, in the furnace, and will try them as gold is tried, and they shall call on my name, all who call upon the name of the Lord, on Mount Zion in Jerusalem shall be saved. And I will hear them, and I will say, It is my people. And they shall say, The Lord is my God. 
All right, that's Zechariah 13, and the other scripture in there was from Joel 3, I believe. And who, who, how is this going to happen? Let me tell you. His fan is his, his hand, Matthew 3, 12. And he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat, this is harvest time, into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. This is a final judgment. You know, those who are going into the unquenchable fire, that's hell. And, you know, if you don't believe in hell, doesn't make it any the less real. It just makes the fact that you're not real. What? Malachi 4.4. 4. Do you remember the law of Moses, my servants, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all of Israel with the statutes and the judgments? Here it is. Malachi saying, this is Malachi. He is prophesying, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. But he won't be under Zohar teachings or Kabbalah teachings. And he won't be under the, he, he will point to the law of Moses, but he won't be under the law of Moses. Because without the blood of Jesus, you cannot have the spirit of the living God because you are unclean. And your sins are stand before you and obstruct your way. And the only door is the blood of Jesus. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers, who the patriarchs, to the children. The patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they're looking down from heaven. You know, they know. Here's our children's 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 children. And look, the hearts of the children will be turned to their fathers. So I come to smite the earth with a curse, which is in motion now. Um, as a final scripture about the furnace and the things of God, <sighs> Jesus is a shepherd. He's the only shepherd that takes away. He's the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. He was the covenant before the Torah was given. Uh, the Torah and the, the feast, Pesach, all point to Yeshua the Messiah. He's the fountain of blood that cleanses from sin and uncleanliness. Matthew 13, 4. At 40. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it shall be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who has ears to hear, let him hear. Yahashua, Yeshua, to enter the promised land. His name is Yeshua HaMashiach. He's the Lord Sovod, the commander-in-chief of the armies of heaven. And he is the only way into the eternal promises, the heavenly uh, inheritance that we are. He's the only door. Yeshua, the Mashiach, is the only his blood over the portals of our heart and our ears and our mind and hands. He's the way in. There is no other name given under heaven by which men might be saved. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Repent of your sins, turn away from your wickedness, and come to that fountain of blood that cleanses from all sin and unrighteousness and enter into the eternal promises of everlasting life and glory forevermore. Thank you.